Rescuers are still working to reach scores of people trapped after Wednesday's earthquake in Taiwan as a massive cleanup operation begins. At least 10 people were killed and more than 1,000 injured in the quake. In the eastern city of Hualien, near the epicenter, workers have now begun demolishing a building that's been tilting at a precarious angle since the disaster struck. Officials hope to complete the de demolition in two weeks. The magnitude 7.4 tremor was the island's worst in a quarter century. DW correspondent James Chater reports from Hualien. In Taiwan's mountainous Taroko National Park, a dramatic backdrop for a dramatic rescue. This is a moment six quarry workers were airlifted to safety from the area just north of Hualien, the city closest to the epicenter of the most powerful earthquake to strike Taiwan in 25 years. The rugged landscape here is where hundreds of people remain trapped, mostly by landslides which have blocked roads and tunnels. Many remain missing nearly 48 hours since the earthquake struck. In Hualien, aftershocks continued to ripple through the city as clear-up operations got underway. The inside of this 15-storey residential tower block was among the worst hit. When we arrived, officials were escorting residents in floor by floor to assess damage to their homes. Rescue worker Lan Junbing took us inside too. The foundations of this building remain largely intact, but the details really have come crashing down over here. We have running water from a burst water pipe. And that's why in this building and in many buildings across Hualien, authorities are saying it's still too dangerous for residents to return. In the immediate aftermath, our aim is to save as many people as possible. But after that, we're also trying to do as much as we can to help people recover, whether that's rebuilding or overcoming the emotional or physical impact. Outside, residents describe their response after seeing their homes for the first time since the tremor. When we went into our house, almost everything was on the floor. So going up there was emotionally tough. Most people are dealing with it quite well. We can't control earthquakes after all. For many, Taiwan has at least controlled the extent of the destruction. Earthquake proofing regulations mean scenes like this in Hualien are the exception, not the rule. And for more, I'm now joined by our correspondent James Chater, who filed that report. He is in Taroko National Park, that's near Hualien. Uh, James, what's the situation like where you are? Yeah, well, this is really where the focus of operations is now. Uh, more than 48 hours since the earthquake struck uh, eastern Taiwan. And just to give you a bit of context of where we are right now and how it fits into those rescue operations, we're currently at the location, um, the furthest location journalists can get into the national park. And you can see behind me some of the damage already, uh, rubble on this side of the road. And also, if you can see behind me, previously one of the main roads uh, that led up to the National Park. You can see how narrow it is, and that gives you a sense of how dangerous some of these roads are, leading up to the more mountainous areas where people remain trapped. Many of these, these roads are essentially cut in to the bottom of rock faces, and with so many aftershocks taking place today, which is why we're still wearing hard hats, there are concerns that as these rescue operations continue uh, that more landslides could take place, um, as well as rocks falling onto the roads as those rescue operations proceed, which is how some of the deaths um, that have taken place since this earthquake uh, have happened. Now, tell us how many more people are still trapped or missing otherwise? Well, first of all, we had confirmation earlier today that there have been two more uh, deaths, um, also people who were initially trapped in Taroko National Park. We understand there are about a dozen more people uh, still missing, unable to be contacted. Uh, and then on top of that, you have uh, hundreds of people still stuck in this luxury hotel, which you can't see from here, but it's way further up the mountain. Um, a few hundred meters away, uh, back from uh, the entrance of the National Park is really where the operations are being controlled from. And from there, you're seeing frequent helicopter sorties flying overhead. Many of those sorties are are aimed at bringing food and water supplies to people who are still trapped there. But we have seen images uh, of people being rescued from that hotel and brought back down uh, with the helicopters too. And just to point out a little bit about the, the reception
perception and how um, the emergency response is being perceived within Taiwan. We met someone when we arrived at this bridge earlier on today who was a relative of someone who is still missing. And he had a criticism, which was that um, so much of the emergency response in the immediate aftermath of the earthquake was focused on Hualien City. This is the biggest city closest to the epicenter of the earthquake. The National National Park, um, where the situation is, is much more treacherous just given the extremely mountainous conditions that are around here. So some sense of how uh, the rescue operations um, have been proceeding here because as well, Taiwan has already won much praise for how well earthquake proofing uh, buildings has limited really total destruction in these cities. Still, um, it's been difficult to control that sort of situation uh, in this more rural part of eastern Taiwan. Our correspondent, James Strater, there in the Taroku National Park in Taiwan. Thank you very much.